Cinco de Mayo. So running on about two and a half hours right now. And uh, you know what? That's fine, though, because we've got a lot of really awesome things to take a look at today. A lot of goodies that came with the Wave 1 update or around, you know, so we've got a lot of field service guys to take a look at. I do not have an ocean because I literally rolled off of my couch <laughs> and threw whatever on and went, okay, we have to we have to stream. <laughs> so. It's time, right? Right? Oh, so, yeah. yeah, it's it's a little bit interesting. Our stream, you, everyone kind of missed the intro here. We, we didn't have the stream actually going out, of course, to Twitch into LinkedIn. So uh, we were just teasing each other that... Uh, Adam's a little bit tired. It's been a it's been a long day for him already. I'm a little rough. I'm a little rough. I'm a yeah. little rough. He was all partying Cinco de Mayo, having way too much fun, you know, all yeah. that kind of stuff, Party, right? Partying, partying in an Albert Lee Walmart. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right? Getting get, get getting the second dose. dose. Yeah. Okay. What? Yeah, the, the, the Cinco de Mayo stuff, the, jo the jokes could go on endlessly. And I, I was even joking up leading up to it like, Ah, you know what? I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna go get a big fat margarita, and everything will be good with the world. And for the first ten hours, everything was right with the world. And then things started to slowly creep <laughs> up. And you know what, though? The don't let that freak you out. Um, go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Go get the vaccine. Help everybody out. Row in the right direction. So get um, everything done you know, with it, right? It's necessary. And on a positive note, I do have to say, I feel right now at what is it? 11:04 in the morning. 10 times better than I did not six hours ago, yeah. seven hours well, ago. Well, so. I mean, it is an immune response, right? I mean, the second yep. one is for really the test to make sure the body's ready. So, hey. Oh, my body was something. <laughs> it was ready, right? <laughs> it was ready. <laughs> it was something. <laughs> Awesome. Well, if you're in the chat, go ahead and uh, say hello. Good morning. Uh, we're glad to have you guys on today. Um, today's actually going to be really fun, like you were saying, Adam. I mean, we're really we're focusing on more specifically field service capabilities, right? We're starting to yep. dive into 2021's Wave One as part yep. of this. So, yeah, we are going to look at not only um, <clears throat> you know some of the the uh, Features, functionality. Sorry, I'm sliding a few things around here right now, that we're that we're used to. Um, but a lot of enhancements and um, a lot of you know, if, if anybody's dabbled and checked out the like the new uh, the new schedule board in field service, we've got a lot of updates and almost reaching parity with the old schedule board. So it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. And I do have to throw a disclaimer out there. My brain is mush. So <laughs> if fellas, if I am like going way left field or I don't know how to find something. Pull me back in. We will. We, and, we, and chat, you know, help out too. If, <laughs> if you've got well, I, I was just saying this is the time to ask all the hard questions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is your chat. Bring them on. <laughs> I want to say good morning, everyone, too, that's joining. It looks like Rob, Mary, Zach, Carolyn, Sabrina, Ashley, and Mr. Marcus. It looks like you're in chat as well on LinkedIn. So uh, yeah. welcome, everyone. It's great to have you on. I guess, Adam, I mean, with that, we might as well just dig in because we've got a lot of content to go through. And, yeah. you know, what What I was te teasing you about earlier is that it's not as much Marcus and I as, as it is you today. So we get to haggle you or be hecklers or, or, or have fun and chat. We, we need to we need participation with this. So as you have questions, let's let's shoot some to Adam and see how he reacts to it. So all Every right. Every response is going to be either a long <laughs> string of like consultant D like. <laughs> just it's gonna... dancing around the topic or it will be punting to microsoft documentation just to set the stage for everyone today <laughs> <laughs> we know or, where or that's with enough time and money anything is possible exactly or, yeah, right exactly that. we can make, make it go two, to... two three legs of the stool and and yeah we can make anything happen if, if you want yeah we'll but... we'll use field service to launch a uh, spacex uh space shuttle so that'd be kind of cool so there yeah, we go yeah, yeah. mr stallman yeah, we'll... good to see you too on on chat so Sorry, but Adam, go ahead. Sorry, keep no, on interrupting. Oh, good. You. I wanted to ask you, Mister Prepare, uh, can we see the screen? We or can. Is that, is that up? Cool. We are right, live. Well, I think if it's all right with the group here, we just go ahead and jump in. Let's do it. Sweet. So, um, I do have a deck just to kind of structure some things for us today um, because my my brain needed it to come back to that <laughs> um, tidbit. So, um, you know, I want to set the stage on what like 
uh, what, what's included in the uh, the Wave One uh, updates for field service specifically? There are, you know, we have we have updates for all the apps. If you've seen the if you've seen the guide, it's it's huge. But we're uh, focusing exclusively on field service today. And I do, you know, for those that might not be dipping into their ad, admin portal or have those privileges, I at least wanted to just show where we go and just to you know either check that you have Wave One enabled or to go ahead and do it. Um, you know, so a little bit of the the admin pieces to kind of kick off, but then I want to jump into actual demonstrations and talking through a few pieces here. So starting with our new guided setup, we'll talk through that, enabling frontline workers and data entry and really streamlining that process. Then we're going to jump into knowledge base for text. And I this is one feature I went, I mean, that's a no brainer. Great. We have these latched onto work orders now. I did not know how seamless it was. And I did not know from a tech in the field mobile perspective, like how how fancy they got with that. It's really cool. It's it's really, really cool to be able to um, see the knowledge base capabilities we have within, you know, customer service really cast that wider net in uh, in meaningful uses for field service. So uh, and then, you know, we'll kind of take a stroll through the the newest, you know, the the new schedule board that Microsoft has had in there. You can have the, the, the slider. You can go to the old one, go to the new one. But we'll take a look at some of those features. A lot of really good pieces there. Uh, and then who customer portal i just got this kind of working right before we jumped on um so there's a short runway but we now have uh, as an end customer as somebody that's expecting somebody to show up to fix or to replace or to test or inspect we now have uh, a means of tracking those those texts um of seeing work order details and getting uh, proactive notifications so a lot of goodies like just so many goodies um you know i've been really on a big uh uh, marketing kick for a long time because Microsoft is throwing a ton of R&D in, into marketing. Um, I wasn't aware of some of these features prior to, you know, a, a couple of weeks ago. So it'll be, it'll be cool to take a look at. So overview, uh, these are themes. I want to start out with themes. Microsoft likes to, in their release guides, talk about, um, you know, kind of slot in these capabilities under main theme umbrellas. So number one, streamline onboarding experience. That is for you as a field service, like buying field service, implementing field service, working with Stone Ridge or working with a partner. I now have field service for my company. What now? So this is actually like taking some of that that master data configuration and entry and streamlining that from a uh, from a get started uh, page, uh, much like we kind of have in like marketing and a few other areas. So um, we'll take a look at that and actually step through some of that entry. <clears throat> Uh, customer engagement capabilities, we already talked about that portal. So as soon as work orders are scheduled, as soon as a tech is traveling or other milestones that we can configure, um, you know, we're going to get notifications that are sent to the primary contacts of those service accounts, which is really cool. Um, like I said, I, ha I didn't I had a very small runway to try to set this up and I went, you know what, we'll talk about other stuff. It's not really working. Lo and behold, I was testing right before today and I got my emails and it was awesome. So uh, we'll talk through that. And then um, the 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 resource option, you know, the um, schedule board and some of the uh, just streamlining of how we schedule the techs and what capabilities we have as a dispatcher um, or as a tech uh, when it comes to scheduling and optimization within the scheduling cycles. So some of the features to call out and kind of slot in under each each of these, um, you know, we. Uh, We've already talked about a number of them. A couple of others to call out. We now have work order resolutions you'll see under proactive service delivery. So being able to identify what that resolution step or what that resolution tactic really was and identifying that as a standalone record for reuse and for mapping and for reporting. So there are some resolution, um, you know, like the kind of the putting the lid on the work order. What was what was that discrete resolution? We'll always have service tasks and a number of pieces hugging up to that work order, but uh, it's pretty slick to have that now. Um, underneath technician success, um, one point that I didn't bring up that I'm really excited. This is this is um, a, a pretty big one, honestly, is the dataverse appointments in scheduling. So actually seeing my appointments or resource bookable resource appointments. Um, you know, if you have the Outlook sync going on, we can see if people have overlapping internal, you know, internal operations meetings or, um, you know, they've got this, that, the other thing going on. We were a little blind to that or you had to spend money in syncing those things or, or um, you know, having those exposed on the schedule board. So it was a little bit more effort to do that. We now have the capability of a couple of options and we're good to go, um, you know, in configuration there. So we'll take a look at those pieces. But 
Yeah, that's a I common wanna... question people ask about. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, and, that's a great feature to have in there now. And it's, you know, there are some other thought leaders um, in the channel right now when it comes to the project operations as well. You know, scheduling is a big component with project ops. Um, and, you know, the 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 global syncing, you know, having right. everything that I'm doing, regardless of whether that's coming from an Outlook calendar, regardless of whether that's coming from the system or a scheduled work order, making sure I know if or how I can schedule these folks, that's important. And we had to go, you know, it wasn't the best. You had to go to multiple places to see availability, you know, get the full spectrum right. understanding. So, and this is, we don't like to be sales pitchy on Confab here, but I'll pitch it a little bit, you know, um, looking at the, uh, the far left there, you know, hey, we're already, Microsoft is already in the magic quadrant um, when it comes to Gartner's, you know, the, the uh, technology, uh, you know, reports that they put out. They're already there, but they keep getting better. And it's pretty, it's pretty cool to see this investment in, um, in field service. Pretty nice. Yeah, so and just so you guys know too, I'm, I'm purposely not trying to not participate. I'm noticing that the stream has some some drop packets that we're having with it, so I'm kind of doing stuff in the background. So keep going. We're recording. We're live. I'm not hearing any complaints yet, but I'm going to try to resolve it as you're going through this, Adam. Awesome. Okay, so uh, like I said, we will we'll step through a few pieces. I do want to start just because you log in and it's right there on the get get started page. And we were taking a look at this right before we popped on. This this idea of a guided setup. So what is that this proper? Is, this is so cool. Yeah, it's it's pretty slick. And at first yeah. I thought it was it's just one of those get started pages like in marketing where you have resources or like when you ju jump into your maker portals, you've got learning resources, you've got templates, you've got some helpers. I thought it was yep. kind of a helper page and it is a helper page, but it's so much more like it, it actually sets you up for success in terms of setting up your frontline workers and work orders and whatnot. So yeah, yeah we'll this start is a big there. deal. I, I think to your point, this is this is really different than other getting started uh, setup things that we've seen. Yeah. This is yep. this is breaking new ground, I think, for Microsoft. This is good. And you'll see it in action. Marcus, have you popped it open yet? I, I've just read about it. I, I have not okay. had time to dig into it, but I, I think it's it's a it's a change um, in terms of the getting started guides that we've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. I, I just think it's great. Yeah. It's, it's certainly a paradigm shift in what this means. Yeah, it's I mean it's it's got it's not just resources or a single like a, a one-way street of data entry like it right you know you you are setting up a robust master data set you're setting up um in and there's automation built into this so we'll be able to walk through that in in real yeah. time here in a minute um i mentioned the knowledge base for tech so we'll take a look at what that means and how we can streamline that schedule board breakdown um a lot of the new features um that i got to play around with over the last week were actually right from within the mobile app so i do want to bring that up just so we can see how this comes together um, from a text perspective, especially when it comes to accessing those KB articles, what that means, um, knocking out our our bookings, uh, et cetera. And then the customer portal, you know, we'll we'll go and we'll schedule a work order and we'll see, you know, what these what these uh, emails, you know, these notifications for scheduling and milestones look like while we're in there. So with that, let's get the heck out of this slide deck. And our and packets we, are now doing better. We are golden. We got the best packets. We got the best packets. The best packets. Best packets. All right. Honestly, though, the best packet is a fire sauce packet from Taco Bell. So, different conversation. Yep. Totally agree. Um, <laughs> totally agree. Hundred <laughs> percent. So here, here I'm in field service. Can you guys see this? Okay. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Cool. Uh, so, you know. Right off the off the bat, this is new. Like this is this is new. Um, we can even see, you know, it, we we have that get started uh, area. It is like marketing, you know, where it's a dedicated site map thing. Like there's, you know, we have a get started pane, but you'll see, hey, we've got those go tos, those resources um, <clears throat> right on the top. And, and that's great. But down here, all of these setting up your frontline workers, um, you know, creating your service accounts, creating your work orders and the structure there, and then scheduling those work orders. This does bring you through a step by step process of entering this up. So as a new customer, you can imagine the value here. You know, we at Stone Ridge, um, we 
do have a guided setup offering that was it, it's kind of the same we go a, a step further when it comes to um you know a little bit of automation or some features some governance things like that um but if you if you really wanted to beeline get that on ramp as short as possible get the time to value as soon as possible um, this is a really great way for people to just jump in just jump in and start you know start setting this stuff up so you'll see right at the top frontline workers um on the right hand side i mean i can i can view all of them so it'll take you to uh all of your bookable or your your you know here we have scott marcus and adam uh, our frontline workers here our resources um <clears throat> but if i go back to our main home screen get started here i'll start setting up just so we can see the experience so on the right hand side right where we have those blue buttons that say set up create etc we're going to get that you know that that right hand side you know pulled out here so we have a, that flat experience we're not moving away or, or ditching our workspace here so selecting our users here so i can select my user so here we have a, a number of folks that are in the mix um and i'm just going to use myself for for our purposes today you can see that i can add more records here so once you have users um, set up in active directory and um, you know we can actually pull them in and realize them in the system. We can add more than just a single user. But then down below, if you're familiar with field service at all, you know this should be pretty familiar. This is essentially that first form tab on your bookable resource. You know you're you're determining your resource characteristics. So what are those skills that they have? You know assembly repair. We'll we'll pull that one in and control system service and uh, you know a few other pieces here. So we can identify those those skills, those uh, characteristics and then that next step down, wh what are the service territories that they're accountable for that they're living in? So I'm going to say Minneapolis St. Paul. Um, but you know we we've got we've got the um, standard uh, security rules, field security profile, mobile offline profile pulled in automatically, and um, <clears throat> you know we can we can actually uh, mark that uh, you know we want to be able to cascade some messaging to, to these frontline work workers as well. So very simple, very very streamlined. You know, right from that get started pane, I can start setting up these bookable resources within our our frontline workers within our system. That next step down is our service accounts. So again, I can view all. I can see what those service accounts are. You know all the accounts that we have in our system right now it's just showing my active so i have you know my my list here but if we wanted to start setting up our key customers this is where we go to on the right hand side over there we go to the create this will have that fly out again and it's it's our quick create one thing that i've noticed is that the the address entry experience is a lot better so um whether you are setting up new service accounts or you're in the mobile app or you're accessing from different points if i started typing in stone ridges uh, uh address here you can see that it's not address one street one address two street two address one city address you know we're not going attribute by attribute it's a sort of it it's like a little frame and if you've ever worked with like <laughs> melissa data or address validation before you know this is where we have the suggestions pop up um and i see it already but you know as i keep typing this is where i can select so it's more it feels like a multi-line text field instead of discrete attributes and it's a much more streamlined process to be able to set that so uh, yeah, that's we nice want... in the multiple mm -hmm. field. It's it's so nice. It's yeah. so nice. It's just more intuitive. This is how people yeah. are entering addresses, working with them day to day. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's always been something that I've kind of poo pooed and didn't like is this transition to the unified interface in Dynamics 365. We didn't have a good answer for address one composite fields. We didn't have a good answer for managing this data, especially from a data entry perspective. So this really streamlines things when we're setting up our service accounts. But you'll see this address, you know, this control here pop up um, and if i go to the edit you can see that we we can definitely get attribute by attribute if we want that level of control but we can go right into that kind of that yeah. um that little frame there yeah i'm gonna duck out of that we're not gonna i already have a stone ridge account in here so we're not gonna do that but you know the next next step is creating our work orders so yes yeah, so we can go view all we don't have to do that now but if i go to create here this is where it'll pull in that key work order information, all of those data points. So who is the, who are we servicing? Who are we working with? So we'll go to Stone Ridge work order type, you know, is it break fix? Is it uh, an inspection? Is it uh, install replace? You know, so we, we can, we can start setting this up. I really like this, this form though, because it has some additional, it has new features here. So, you know, we're used to setting our service account. We're used to setting lookups. We're used to configuring these work orders, but what's really, really neat is if this is, 
you know, this is intended for new users. So you're kind of working with a blank slate. How cool is it to, yeah, I have my standard fields up top. What is our price list? Who are we working with? Um, but down below, you can see that we've got these new controls to uh, introduce new tasks, new products, and new services uh, on the fly. So this is where I can go to new task, and you can see that this is that, I I. I don't know if this is technically considered like the fluent UI. I think yeah, it is. It's um, kind of different. You know, like the, 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 the teams sort of, you know, the new schedule board, the new appointments, all these V2 controls that we have in the system. I don't know if that's based on fluent UI or not, but it's slick and it's nice and it's clean. So, you well, know, I think we... it's, it's oh, really, it, it's more in line with how people I think enter data and, and work with data versus this form mentality. I, I think you train people to work with forms. This just seems more intuitive to how people are thinking. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's it's that logical sequence. You know, yep. oftentimes we're, you know, Stone Ridge, other partners, people that know field service, we kind of understand the sequence and we, we right. educate on the sequence and we know what kind of data we're going to need to build these key relationships around our work orders and around our scheduling processes and resource management processes but to have this laid out and to have it be so intuitive like this is just really great you know yep. what are my service tasks how long is it going to take simple description you know what kind of products are we going to actually need to execute this what kind of services are we building against you know so this is this breaks down in a very very clean a very new very modernized ui um, the ability to structure with ease these work orders so this whole thing you know i can save and book this so it'll it'll save it um, I think I can probably do it right now, you know, save this and book this. So it'll scoop everything in, you know, this is sort of our single pane of glass, take everything into a work order, and then it'll take a second to think and we'll pop up the, you know, the, the booking. So we'll be able to book resources for this. And it's cool. Cause we have, you know, I, I talk about flat experiences all the time. We're still not, we still haven't moved away from our workspace, our guided setup in the background, but you can see as that, that kind of that secondary layer, hey, we've got our work order that we're working on here, and now we're pulling up the the resource booking on the right-hand side. It is taking a second to think, but this is the first time I've opened, opened this up, up in this environment. Well, it's really cool about it, like you said. I mean, we've talked about it. That's why we went through our guided setup, right? We introduced the concept. Yeah. It was last year now that we started working through, and that was you, Sarah, Joe, and a bunch of other team members. We went through this concept of, you know, making it so it's easier for you to implement, right? Because, you know, I think back in the day, like we started selling field service and everyone's like, well, the minimum amount of time is like 600, 700 hours. We were even talking about it on stream before, right? Whereas... <laughs> If you think about some of the field service scenarios that you have, like you just you, fundamentally, you want to track a tech going out to go ahead and do a repair and you just want to record what they use as they go through that repair. Like if you yeah. really oversimplify it and there's a lot of businesses that just need that basic concept. They, huh? they don't yes. need it because they've got a paper form that they're doing it on it right now. I mean, anything digital is a huge step forward. So this is absolutely, I love that they've actually thought absolutely. through this. Nice and sequenced, nice and clean. It makes sense. They have, you know, Microsoft has been doing a much better job um, over the last year, maybe a couple of years, in being more proactive with like even fields. You know, what does this field on this form mean when you hover over and it gives you the descriptor? Um, you know, allowing a user to jump in and start doing, but in an informed way, um, and knowing why we're setting these things up in sequence here. So this last step is is scheduling. We we have some, um, you know just like we see in our maker portal and whatnot, we've got some resources at the bottom here. But if we go to schedule, this is going to take us to our schedule board. We'll flip over, you'll see the sitemap update, or you know, the, the area that we moved to is the schedule board. So really cool stuff. I'm gonna I'm not gonna go into the schedule board now. I wanna wait for those goodies for in a few minutes. Oh yeah, oh, but, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah, so so this is it's it's great to see the forethought. It's great to see the thought leadership from Microsoft's side. Um, I wish we would have had this earlier, quite honestly. Um, you know, to, to have those end customers be informed, understand the sequence, know what goes into setting up these, these work streams. But um, it's really neat to have this in here. I have to say the field service product team has been doing a bang up job in, in either refining some of those soft zones or giving us new functionality that kind of, uh, I think you used the, the term earlier, uh, Marcus, you know, this new paradigm where, you know, we're, we're trying to simplify like let's take mystique out of the fact out of, out of the equation and and simple simplify this onboarding experience yep 
So, uh, you know what? I, I realized I skipped over how to turn all this junk on. <laughs> yeah, how, how do you <laughs> so, turn it? <laughs> so we went right to the guide. We were all, we were we went all right to the guide. guide we need to see it. Uh, so um, I'm going to go actually up to, um, you know, if, if you don't have this, here's here's the segue. If you can't see this, if you don't have this, here's where you can go to make sure to turn that stuff on. So um, I am in, you know, I went to my Power Platform Admin Center and then I, I hit up my environments and then I went into the pre-sales demo, um, you know, that or my environment that I'm in. So this is kind of where Marcus and I get to tag team on on a few things when it comes to CE, BC integrations and end-to-end, -end, you know, lead to cash processes and whatnot. So, um, you know, what, what's, what you see is environment information and then down below we have our updates and this updates, gosh, is the stream okay, Scott? Like on you know my video and sharing and everything, I feel yeah. like uh, might be some maybe caching issues or something. It might be. Um, yeah, it looks like uh, right now the stream is starting to recover. So who knows? Maybe. maybe it's the entire internet. We've all we all have Comcast, don't we? Is that is that? I oh. do. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus is laughing because there's a deeper yeah. story to that chat. I will tell you that. So, but anyways, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, under the uh, under the updates, there we go. So. There you go. Uh, Follow me on Facebook. You get updates <laughs> later in the week. <laughs> I'm waiting for the blog, Marcus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm, I'm going to do whatever I can, but yeah, more to come later on that. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so under updates, you'll see here 2021 release wave one is on. If it's off, you can click in there and, and flip the switch. It's as easy as that. But if you want a more granular breakdown, um, you can go over here to the resources and go to your D365 apps. And this is where you can see, um, <clears throat> you know, your list. You will have our like sales enterprise, field service, project operations, scheduling. We'll have those, uh, those bits in there. Um, so down below... You can see service scheduling and a few other pieces. Um, if you want to check your uh, field service version, because a lot of these are dependent on the version, you know, like we, we get these releases, we get these updates, you might have 2021 enabled. You did this a couple of weeks ago or whenever you could, but field service isn't latest and greatest. This is where you can pop into your make.powerapps.com. And you can go into your solutions and check out the field service solution down below here and this is where we can get some additional details so we can we can actually see the the field service bits and what version we're running and whatnot so version 8.8.0.88 so um we're pretty good so For just those business central users out there the admin portal the business central admin portal is uh, similar so if you haven't been in there, you do have the ability to look at the extensions, what version they're on, um, the screen previous to this where you can apply updates. So Microsoft is is making that it's not a consistent UI in terms of where this happens, but uh, in terms of what you can do is starting to be uh, consistent, which is super positive. That is awesome. Yep. All right. I'm coming back to my deck here to keep me honest. OK, so we, I wanted to move into, um, you know, uh, some some of the keeping with some of I guess the configuration you know I wanted to start with guided setup how we can configure and get, get that on ramp pretty pretty short pretty truncated um, now in terms of configuration we now have knowledge base capabilities um, within field service or you know we're using that 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 knowledge base that we know and love from a customer service perspective now being able to tie those to products now being able to automate automatically pull in KB articles to work orders and have those accessible from that single pane of work order you know that, that single pane of glass at the work order level and, and equip our techs um, for that knowledge base so um, Within the system here, what I'll do actually is go down just to kind of show you the, the uh, under the hood, um, under here where it says service. I'm going to flip this over to settings and we'll notice that in our sitemap in our menu now, if I scroll down just a little bit, look at that. We've got knowledge management. So just like customer service, we have our knowledge articles. We've got our templates, um, search providers. If you wanted to search across uh, environments or pull in Microsoft, you know, search capabilities. This isn't new; it's just there for us. But yep. knowledge yep. articles here. If I go in, we'll see, you know, the the list of articles that we have. And this is, you know, I, I do want to open this up just in case somebody hasn't really used knowledge base articles uh, in customer service yet. But here I have one that I whipped up this morning, you know, for for a desk, like a standing desk, something that's, you know, got a got a couple of motors and some electronics and whatnot. 
there's not a whole lot to these. We have our title, what is it all about? We have our description, what is it all about? And then we've got our keywords. So this helps us search for knowledge base articles when we actually are kind of scouring our whole pool to find, you know, the, the right one. And down below, I just included like a simple image, you know, some like configuration options and assembly overview. So this is all just kind of like thrown into the mix. Uh, but this is a rich text editor, so we can include rich media. We can, um, you know, if you have some code savvy folks uh, internally, you can even hit the HTML and work at it at a very low level. And then we can preview it. So how how might this look? It's, it's not perfect. I will say that this, you'll, these previews, um, I, I think the first time I saw them were it was in um, uh, D365 marketing. So this is a very simple way to visualize how these might look uh, from different devices. But um, you know that's that's really the the long and short of these knowledge articles. There is a whole publishing process, major versions, minor versions, etc. We're not going to get into that today, but it's easy enough, you know, just to kind of show how how easy it is to get these articles up and running, publish it, you're good to go. So that's the back end. Well, now what what do we do with this? You know, um, how can we how can we work with this? So, if I go up to the right hand side in the ellipses here, this is where I can um, you know for old articles we can archive. But this is this right here is what I'm concerned about is relate to a product. So when I when I select that option, this is where we can tie this directly to a SKU, tie this directly to an item, a part, something discrete. Uh, within the system and I already have it tied to an Athens desk like an actual like uh, product that we have in the system but you know the the tying it to the product is important and that's important for when we generate work orders um, because if I go to our main area back to our service area and I just want to um, get a get my list of work orders so I can kind of show you uh, one that I whipped up earlier. See this knowledge base in action. So we have our article. It's versioned. It's published. We're we're ready for prime time. And if I go into let's go to three five nine. I think that's the one that I had. Good to go. You'll see a new tab. So um, in in like directly in the system, the full web application. Here we have this uh, awesome articles. articles tab now. So. If I crack that open, we will be able to see, hey, there's linked article. I didn't add this to the work order. What I did, however, was add the product that it was tied to to the work order. So as we, you know, use our work order templates and are filling the body of, you know, the the, the parts, products, services, service tasks, you know, particularly the products here, as we're as we're either leaning on a template to build that for us or entering it manually, it will streamline that. It will automatically bubble up those related articles right at the work order level so it's easily accessible by text. So <clears throat> to see this in action, um, if you give me a, just a second, folks. Aha, I, there we go. This is where it gets fun. This is where it gets here, useful, right? Here's from a text perspective. Uh -huh. We will start now, and this is my own... This is my device here. We should see. Um, I'm already in the app. You didn't need to see me load that up. Um, does we, that is this, we, we uh, trust is this an you. okay size? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, looking pretty good, good on here for me. So um, chat, tell us if it's not. 359. I think it was 00359 was that work order. So here I have my bookings. I slid that onto my plate um, for our purposes here today. So as a tech, you know, we're kind of flipping the persona here. I'm now in the field. There we go. Um, I'm going to go into that work order or that that booking. And let me go over to my service tab. And on this, from this service tab, this is really, as a tech, this, this is the one-stop shop for everything that I'm doing. You'll be able to, you, you can see, we've got our service tasks up top. And I don't know if you've been in, um, if you're using field service, if you've been in the mobile app lately, maybe you're not um, on the technician side of the house, but you know, this one, the, this like single tap, you know, tapping in and knocking out our service tasks. You can see that in real time, it kind of shows us the progress uh, as we go through and, and, um, and complete each of these tasks for this, uh, for this work order type. So that's a new issue. Uh, component here and I can add new ones uh, as well services being built I don't have anything in there however you can see we now have linked articles uh, you can see that Athens desk there and I don't have to you know oftentimes you'll 
we'll have to tap into like the ellipses, you know, for more options. What's really cool from a mobile, like a mobile tech perspective is that I can just tap right on the face value of that knowledge article and it pulls it up. So I can see, okay, this is what I have to do here. The parts that I need, you know, what does this coupler look like in the mixed grand scheme of things? And then down below here is the assembly overview. So, you know, it's just, it's just so easy to equip our techs now with the how to's and the one sheets and the brochures and manuals and service, you know, the service documentation that we have and uh, have that right in line with, you know, the, the product, which is the desk that we were talking about with the, um, you know, the incident type and all of the other work order information that we have. So it's just been really cool to be able to see that fly very easy to set up and adds a ton of value to our field techs. Yeah. And a field tech, I mean, think about it, like we're on a phone right now. A lot of them are typically tablets, right? Because they're, they also, yeah. as you start looking at this, want to print out, but you know, think about like HVAC, like HVAC or even just appliance repair, like as a field tech and you're going out and to do a repair with it. Um, sadly, there are no repair techs that come to my house anymore because I take care of it myself. But in the, in the rare situation that, that we do have a tech, you know, the, the cool thing about it is that remember the truck is an inventory location as well. And typically yeah. when you're going out for a repair, you may not know exactly what that part is, right? So being able to quickly look it up, reference it, and then add it, for example, to the item that you're consuming to remove it from the truck and then to build a customer for it. I mean, it's super convenient. And then to other people in chat, you know, saying, you know, the easier you can make it, that's absolutely true. You don't want to have like 5 billion things that a person can click on uh, to yep. drive really those transactions, right? So this, I, I really, I'm surprised, Adam, candidly, that that feature wasn't there before. Because I could see a lot of people wanting to customize it to just add this super easy, convenient feature of just, reference information right? right and it's not that we didn't you know a lot of folks that we work with have um you know for the the field service customers anyway mm -hmm. they probably have customer service um i mean maybe it's 50 50 but you know the, the capability was there and we can expose it in different ways it's just that you had to you had to jockey you had to yeah. go somewhere else to go do and with this feature now fully baked in you know, we we're doing we're doing it the right way. Yeah, uh, exactly. We're working we're working smarter essentially. Yep. And when we build those uh, articles, um, and you know, we can intricately tie those, or rather, in intimately tie those to discrete products. Why shouldn't we then be able to streamline the access to those articles based on the products that are included on our work order? It's just that's that's pretty intuitive stuff. So you know, Microsoft kind of bridged that gap, that digital gap when it you know, when it came to, when it comes to accessing the KB and then having that mean something for those techs. Yep. Awesome. One thing I, I, I see on the screen here, I didn't call this out uh, in our notes and our deck and whatnot, but this is new. Create incident type. Um, I think this was a wave one. I, I want to say this is a wave one feature, but this is something that I stumbled on as I was setting up the KB stuff. And I went, hey, what the heck is that button? I can on the fly from a work order, say we have a new work order, uh, say it's a, a kind of a new flavor of a work order, something we haven't tackled in the past, something that we really don't have baked into a, sort of our, our master plan. Well, if we come across those work orders and we're structuring it, we're kind of, you know, manually configuring the flavor, the essence, the, all the product services, tasks, everything around that work order, we now have a streamlined way, again, making this efficient to pull all of that into a new work order incident type. So here it says home office desk repair i'm just actually just going to copy that so now we can actually include repeatable processes and you know for this like i do not have home office desk repair as a as a work order type um, or an incident type in my system but it'll pull in um you know the the any related types and then you know we, we can copy the products and template this out so i can actually create a new incident type right on the fly or right from our work order on the fly and this helps us it's just you know it, it's just so slick to have a one button solution to be able to keep getting better keep getting more informed and refining our processes and offerings um the system is a lot smarter than you know, it was even a year ago. You know, you you need to go back to that screen. There's one UI element that I wish they would do on almost any form and that you could then expand or collapse it. It is at the top when you clicked on it, it tells you what that form is for. Like 
And that, yeah. you know, the incident type, I didn't know what it was on stream until you just, you didn't even say it. I was able to read on the screen to say, <laughs> well, this is what this is. It's a template that I can reuse for it. Like yeah. that would be like, I love that UI element to it. Yep. It's, it's really slick. So this is a brand new, I mean, so, so far as I know, this is a wave one feature that we have now. So another tool in the toolbox to make our, um, you know, to make our lives easier, uh, you know, whether we are um, a tech or somebody internally, but yeah, that create incident type, if I do that again, bring that back up, sorry for the roundabout. Yeah. <clears throat> this is where, and that kind of, that kind of um, relates to what I mentioned earlier, Microsoft being more proactive in telling you, you know, the kind of the, the how and the why, not just the what, mm -hmm. you know, so here's, here's a new feature, have at it. That doesn't do us a whole lot of good. Here's a new feature, and this is why it's meaningful, and this is why you should pay attention. Exactly, right? Because yep. too too often you get these new forms that are there, and you click on it, and you're like, well, I could use this for like 10 different things, and it's not what the design was really intended for. Now, you can obviously change what incident types mean, possibly, right, through customization, yep. but um, yeah, just yep. ho hopefully you didn't spill anything over there. Just, just No, I actually spilled my geeky deliciousness, so we'll get to that later. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> um so yeah, you know that it, especially seeing it on the fly in um, in the mobile app, it's it's easier than ever. Um, you know, as a tech, to pull up everything I need, have basically my consolidated list of anything or everything that I need that I need to be on top of or knock out um, right alongside everything else. You know, so this is this is really cool stuff. Yeah, and Rob had uh, a, tell me the closest warehouse to find this ad hoc replacement part and how much it costs and what's on their shelf, right? So we're getting we're getting to those areas pretty easily here with this type of stuff, which is pretty cool. And and Scott and I talked right before this session, um, you know, including tools and extensions. I'm using extensions loosely. Don't don't come at me, BC or Nav folks. Um, so. Sure. You know, ex extending our automation by way of Power Virtual Agents. Um, I, we, Scott and I were taking a look at a couple of videos earlier where, yeah, you know, we can we can dip into uh, our inventory and pull back parts and we can embed those uh, bots right on our work orders or right on our um, bookings, you know, so we can we can use a, uh, a guided experience of, by way of a bot with some back end automation to go retrieve and to go add, you know, so um, this is sort of the out of the box. But, you know, if we think of automating everything, if we think of automation wins and wh what sort of tools we can invest in to to do something like that, retrieve a part, see the on hand um, uh, and then pull that and group that and tie that to work orders can totally do it. And it's not even that complex. So um, what else did we want to see? Uh, the schedule board. Yeah, my brain. See, this is where my mm -hmm. brain starts to get flat <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> So let's go take a peek at the schedule board. Uh, some updates turn, here. Turn it off first. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. All right. I did. I, I made yeah, it. There you go. Good. I you got it. I actually wanted to do that, but right before yeah, we got done, right? I, I checked something and I, yeah. So it's sure, like the big know. reveal here. It's like the big reveal. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a pretty big change. I was Let's actually in a demo. Too much because that's going to be a womp womp. Yeah. <laughs> great. Great. There are new colors. Cool. Cool guys. Uh, no, it's, they're, there's a lot. There's a lot yeah. going on here. So. Yeah. So it's it's loading up right now the the classic schedule board. So if you've been in field service, if you field D three six or if you've seen D three sixty five field service demonstrations in the past, this is probably pretty familiar. So it's um you know it's it's got the classic look and feel to it, and this is uh, kind of a carryover from the field one acquisition um, in the middle of the last decade. You know, Microsoft acquiring field one and then rolling that into their field service product. This is this is something that came along with that, and it's. It's so powerful. It is very, very powerful. I do not want to poo-poo this schedule board because oh, it's phenomenal. Yep. It's, and, even at this level. Yeah, and we don't even have this extended. We don't have customizations on here. You know, there's a whole development layer we can work with to really tailor this. But you know, this is where we can we have our map view on the left, so we can see our org units, we can see our resources. You know, we can see our cards and everything. So. We have all of our work orders and bookable, uh, our uh, different types of bookings down below. But you mm. may have seen, if you've been Lin in there, over I, over I a, the top right. What's sorry, that? I, did, sorry. I, I see that you're very good at linear program. What about nonlinear programming? <laughs> Zero. Nothing. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> I saw that. I'm like, what is that mean? Okay, go ahead. Sorry. 
<laughs> so yeah, you know, skills, we talked yeah. about those resource setups, you know, what are those skills? What are those proficiencies for those skills? And then what are the roles that we ought to be playing on projects or, or jobs or what have you? So cool. classic look, classic peek at the schedule board. Um, but up in the top right, this is where Scott was like, turn it off. Um, <laughs> This is where we can flip the switch. So I mentioned earlier, you know, in the guided setup, it's a very clean UI. I th I want to say this is part of the Fluent toolbox, but I could be very wrong there. And this could just be Microsoft's new design precedent for all of their applications because you're going to see some, um, if you've been in D365 sales, customer service, other apps, you know, when we look at like the V2 calendar controls, when we look at some of those fancier control overlays, um, it, it has that look and feel to it. So I actually want to hide that first. Here we have, I'm going to go over to my, my other tab with me as a resource on there. So we have the same setup. We've got our resources front and center. We've got our, our schedule. We've got our, our bookable items down below. So we have our open requirements. I'm going to, once this loads up, I'm going to scoot this over. So we, we have a slate, right? So people are booked. People are doing things. I'm actually in, there's that work order we were taking a look at before. One thing though, look at that. This is That's a big cool. deal right here. Really cool. Those are appointments. So if you are scheduling appointments from an Outlook perspective and you have those synced to Dataverse or you're scheduling appointments from Dataverse, um, this is looking at the Dataverse activity type of appointment and we're pulling that in. Um, and this is this is big, this is a powerful thing because it allows me as a scheduler or a dispatcher to see everything. Um, we talked about going multiple places to do the same thing and it's just, it's not efficient, nobody likes it. We're log potentially logging in multiple times or having to turn the chair around swivel a little bit and then go do and come back that's kind of that's that's being buffed out you know now we can set this up um so i will we'll, we'll step through what's the time 47 we'll step through how to do that in a second um but what i wanted to you know kind of walk through here is this is the new schedule board the newest iteration it has that clean look and feel um and we are getting to almost parity with that um parity parity ty um <clears throat> with the old schedule board so if i go over to the controls you know some of the, the options we have in the top right here this little it's almost the icon for the functional locations if i click that this is our map view so hey we've got the the map view now and we did not have this in the the new schedule board um, not so long ago so if i uh zoom in to uh to North America here. I mistakenly scheduled, who is that? <laughs> Something in um, Seattle. <laughs> all, the, all the demo data is for Redmond, Seattle. And then I drug one up. I was like, yeah, let's get some good schedule board action going on here. And I went, that's a that's a heck of a drive. All right. Well, if I keep we'll scrolling just, in here. We'll loops. just say that you're a HVAC defense contractor or something else like that. So you know how they yeah, spend money it's, it's for like over, It's an over the road. We have to, it's heavy machinery, heavy <laughs> assets. Uh -huh, right. Classified, has to be, has to be driven out there. A fire sure. extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> a single fire extinguisher. yeah exactly right but you know it, this is what we're we're kind of used to you know and, and i'm in grayscale right now we have different settings um but what's really cool here is you know we're, we're getting those or we, we have those same uh features from the old school one where i can crack open my my work order so that's loading up there i can look at my bookable resource this is and for those wonder like i actually do live right here and our uh, St. Louis Park office is right, right here. I'm right down the road. Um, but you know, we can, we can open those records right from this, this place here. Um, and then we've, we've also got, um, the ability to toggle different types, uh, you know, different, um, uh, you know, what we're seeing on the map. So if I go to the view settings here, this is where we have the, the I can even throw on Traffic. this. I have to assume this, this is, this is tapping into Azure map services, um, Azure geospatial services, because I, I set up a test map for a different solution a number of months ago, and it had the same exact look and feel might, might just be Bing services too. Um, but you know, this is really cool to be able to see, you know, for route optimization, or if somebody is going to be running into some pretty hairy traffic as they're going to a customer site, um, you know, we can toggle those those features. So we have the org units of those home offices. We have um, our, the routes, you know, so this person going out to Redmond from Minneapolis, you can see that one, uh, our requirements, which are those those work orders or projects, uh, projects, if you're using project operations, um, or anything that, you know, has been set up for resource scheduling. And is an open rec, uh, bookings, and then resources themselves. So, you know, this is just a really neat, streamlined. You know, if I go to the road view here, um, it it probably will. Um, 
kind of go, get over the hump when it comes to parity and feature set against the old schedule board pretty soon, like in the next couple of updates, I expect. Yeah. I'm not quite sure about the development layer, how how much control do we have? What can we tap into to customize and extend what we see here with code, like pro code scenarios? But it's really cool to see this stuff. And this appointment, uh, I'll, I'll well, take a break. Isn't this the, a first. I'm sorry, isn't this the Bing map map control? It I mean, is. We could do a lot with that. If that's even the standard control, there's a lot that you can drop onto that in addition to what's there. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So the, the new features are great. The appointments, if you want to enable appointment sync, it's pretty straightforward. So if I go to, uh, oh gosh, where do we go now? If I go to my resources, no, it's in, a, we have to actually go from field service to our um, resource management area. So once this loads up with all of our apps in this environment, I'll go to my resource scheduling app. And, and then this... we have to go tap into the the scheduling parameters. And this, see, like, you know, we have to go somewhere else to turn this on. What's the deal with that? It's just because, like, this is sort of the hub for all resource scheduling parameters. If I go down to the bottom left here and go to my settings, this is where I can get into my scheduling parameters and flip the switch. It's as, it's as easy as that. If I go into my scheduling parameters, go into this record here, you'll be able to see appointment sync and it's just a it's just a bit field. A, include appointments, yes or no. So once this is flipped to yes, you get a prompt in the foreground that says enable this for everybody. Yes, let's do it. And then you you'll have to if I go back to my resources here. So once the global setting has been enabled, this is where you then go into I'll go to my record here. You'll go to field service. Sorry, you'll go to scheduling. <laughs> And there will be a, a resource specific toggle for include appointments. So you can, like, if, if it's not, if it's a non factor for some resources for some techs, um, you know, if, if it's a non human, we might want to keep it off. But um, it's as easy as that. And it's really cool to see that, ha you know, see that included now in our scheduling processes. So, so just to understand this, and I, I think I'm hearing such a small feature with such a huge impact. Yep. You can now, I, I get the complaint. Uh, let's start with the, the problem, right? The problem is I have techs that are using Outlook and they're setting up appointments that they want to have for calls and they don't want to go inside of uh, field service to add that appointment. They basically just want the dispatcher to be able to see then that they have appointments at a time so that the dispatcher can appropriately assign them work and not then overload or double book or cut into that appointment time that they're doing an outlook right adam is that is that what i'm hearing here yeah it, it essentially like we we didn't used to have this unification if mm -hmm. i wanted to schedule you scott i if you didn't have any work orders or open requirements from a, a field service perspective all those things you see down below yep, if yep. you didn't have any of those scheduled for yourself i would see your resource as completely open and I, I have free reign to go drop a three, four hour work order on your plate. Yep. Well, you might have an internal operations sync. You might have a manager one-on-one. -on -one. You might have something that cannot be shuffled, cannot be moved, time out uh, of the office. And now we have the capability of bringing that into a consolidated space right here on the schedule board. You can see these two right here. It's like a prep call and like a tools load. You know, I gotta go do something for a half an hour. We now have global visibility for that kind of stuff instead of having to go and, and tap into two different areas or kind of really break efficiency. And I would have to call you or ask you or go, hey, Scott, do you have anything going on today? Cause I wanna yeah. schedule, schedule you for one or 2 PM. So this is, this is really slick. Yeah, Jody, Jody Mack just said, what a great time-saving addition. And I 100% agree with that. It's just, it makes so, it, so, every time I get the question, they're like, you know, can we do Outlook integration with it? It's like, yeah, kind of, you know, type of a thing, but it never reflected it. Now it's native, and that's just, that's an awesome feature. Absolutely. So to kind of close out, I know that we're, we've got about five minutes left. So many awesome features. The way you just framed that up, Scott, I really like, you know, something that, something that is seeming, seemingly low hanging fruit, such a small inclusion that, that ripples out and has such a large value add. You know, mm -hmm. Microsoft is, is being much better at identifying those. You know, how can we make people's lives better with smaller inclusions, more, and more of those, and really refine the experience? Um, one of those refinements happens to be in customer engagement, not, not the not banner tech. of yep. customer engagement of sales, customer service, field service, prod jobs, whatever. 
but like engaging the 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 service folks or you know the the service accounts the contacts the the people we're going to be visiting on site engaging them and informing them you know we would have to configure customize our own notification systems um or you know maybe set up stand up a power apps portal with our own configuration use the use the field service template for a self-service portal or something like that but it's not proactive and it's not automated and we have to really do a lot of that ourselves either as a partner or an end customer having purchased field service but you can see if i go to create here i'm in my maker portal we now have full disclosure this is preview so take that um for you know Take what you're seeing for what it's worth. Okay. Subject so to change. I have to pick Microsoft. on one thing. One thing. Go back up. What? They have the new Dataverse symbol, but they call it the Common Data Service. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You keep going. I about. saw it right away. Right. Continue. Sorry. <laughs> it's not even green. I know. Um, I know. So further down here, um, you'll see that there's a new template option here for field service portal, which is really cool. Um, I don't have the map like uh, the the map capabilities um, really going right now, unfortunately, but it's super simple to, you know, you, you click into the field service portal, <clears throat> you give it a subdomain, or, you know, name, subdomain, name, whatever, it'll check availability. Uh, and there are a few pieces that you have to manage. I, we don't have time today to go through, uh, but you do just as a disclaimer, for those proactive notifications and to either send via email or SMS, um, those, those hey, a, t a tech has been scheduled, a tech is in, uh, en route to you, uh, you do have to go in and configure some flows. So they give you the connectors, they give you the flow, kind of the template, you have to essentially log in and, you know, uh, make sure that everything's teed up from your from your connectors perspective. And that's, that's pretty much it, you know, so you will have to go into the field service portal dash flow solution go find those flows and make sure that you sign in to those connectors so it works but what's really really nifty is once you have things um flowing pretty well no pun intended um once i scheduled that uh, that other uh, the uh, the work order this 359 that we were looking at earlier mm -hmm. i uh got an email i'll drag it over so there's actually a notification queue um, that was built for this. You can see within the flow, if you, if you go into edit that flow, it's actually pointing at a table called, I think it's notifications or notification queue or something. So it seems like it's a standalone table for this discreetly. But um, how cool is this? Hi, Adam. This is a reminder that your booking with Contoso Cable is Contoso coming up soon. Contoso Cable. <laughs> Marcus, is that yeah. who you went with? Is that, is that who you have? Podcast? It was Contoso? Uh. I, I'd, I'd pick anybody. <laughs> so it pulls in, you know, contact us information down below. It pulls in your, your actual booking, you know, just the, the high level, the, the high rocks here. What, who, you know, when is this going down? Uh, when can we expect attack? But if I go to this view details button, it'll fly open a new tab. And this is that portal. So this is that infrastructure that we're seeing. So you can go in, you can brand this, you can theme this right actually from the field service application to a degree. But it says, hey, this is your tech. Here's the booking information here. And then I had another email once I once I actually scheduled, uh, or sorry, once I marked the work order as uh, traveling, you know, so going to the site, this is where we get a, a secondary email or notification. We can send this via SMS and push as well um, if we have something like a Twilio or other services that we're tapping into. But here I can go to track my technician, which is actually going to give us that map breakdown, where they are en route, and uh, you know the uh, additional um, work order information. So I don't have this fully humming along just yet. You could see that the map wasn't there, but just that ability to pretty easily spin up a hub to and messaging proactive messaging for these folks that are you know expecting visits from techs this is awesome it's awesome and yeah. it's you know it's it's opening up a new automation chapter for for field service and not just you know uh, new bells and whistles but meaningful features meaningful capabilities and it's great to see the the investment yeah, yeah and you know from a customer perspective you know we're, we're joking about my uh, my internet issues i've had tons of internet <laughs> issues but, you know, in the midst of this, we had a, a, a inspection or, you know, just an annual look at our uh, air conditioner uh, last week. And 
it, you know, night and day in terms of customer service. When this, when the service tech for the air conditioner I, and I got an email, we get an SMS message, we get a photo of the technician that's coming. I mean, very proactive communication from uh, from that organization. You know, they they have the tablet. I can I can finish my work order and everything there on the tablet. I can sign it. I get an immediate notification on the receipt, the update that's been done. I mean. These are from a customer service perspective. I I so appreciate these tools. I mm -hmm. really do. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the cool thing here is this is off the shelf. I did not go and build my own flows. I did not go and update forms. I did not do that. I I took the you know the 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 what used to be preview feature documentation, which is now um, you know some of its GA uh, like res uh, resource scheduling optimization is now fully baked into the system. For those that are curious about that, um, you know I, I took what was there and I I really made the off the shelf experience work here, and that's what we're looking at today. So you know taking that a step further, working with a group like Stone Ridge or another partner, you know, we we would be able to take this to much more complex or logically complex scenarios. And we've got a heck of a toolbox to do it. So that's it. That's what I wanted to step through today. That was great. awesome, Thanks, Adam. Adam. That was a lot of great content. So I guess uh, let's uh, kind of kick off. I know, Adam, while you've got the mic, the, the geeky deliciousness we might yeah. as well get in before we do our wrap-ups. I spilled them over here a second ago, but this is... This is, if you've ever seen Ghostbusters two, don't 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 you blur. Oh, yeah, this is. is this is the portrait. This is the giant painting of of Vigo the Carpathian. And he, he <laughs> and looks... I have a little miniature version here. My my one of my BFFs, Lindsay, got this for me, and it's uh, sitting on my desk here. So Vigo just has that nice peachy rise and shine. So glad to see you in the morning face. And that's what I wake up to every single day. Isn't that wonderful? Hey, it could be Tony Blair. I don't know if anyone else has seen the, the photos of him recently, but they've been doing comparisons nope. with him and Vigo. So you should, if you haven't seen that, you should go check it out because that is really it, good. it is pretty good. It is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jody's like, yes, yes. Right. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. So that's awesome. That's a good lead in. All right, guys. So let's talk really quickly about what's coming up here for Confab. So, so let's check this out. Sabrina went ahead and gave me some info on this. So on 520, we've got our manufacturing and Microsoft technology Q&A. So I think, guys, we're doing the, the manufacturing summit that's coming up in two weeks. I think we're, we're getting there, right? Yep. So that is going to be our next uh, big thing. We're going to be there um, really just discussing digital transformation and technology yep. around manufacturing and all those concepts. So um, should be pretty fun to go through through this um let's just double check here other things just to note then as well portals is going to be on 6-3 so um we're gonna have a little bit more fun with the portals everyone wants portals at this point and we have a technology to do it so let's talk about what we can do really easily um so that should be a lot of fun to go through uh, and then dataverse virtual entities like a lot of customers are trying to ask now you know we've got bc or we've got finance and operations apps and we want to be able to to have that additional detail um exposed in a power app for example but we don't want to enable the the cds sync or the dataverse sync for example inside of bc or dual right we just want to expose something um through um virtual entities so that's really what we're looking at for the next couple of weeks here and i think uh yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. There's just a lot, a lot of content to go through with that. So, yep, exciting stuff. Kind of with that, guys. Uh, it is noon. We're going to give you your day back. Thank you for joining and being a part of chat and uh, coming out and hanging out with us. Like I said, in two weeks, we'll go over some of that manufacturing stuff. And yeah, until then, just have fun and reach out to us if you have any questions. So, thank you. Thanks for coming out. Have a good day. Thanks, guys. I am looking for the end and we're still on stream and this is really fun. Where did my ending go? All right, now we're going. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>